My name is Mark Booker, and I serve as the senior minister here at Park, Park Street Church. And uh, I am glad to welcome all of you to this public dedication of these bells in our steeple as a gift to the city of Boston and for the glory of God. And it is a beautiful New England day for this occasion. I, would say. Uh, I want to welcome those of you who are part of the Park Street Church community. Welcome those of you who are neighbors and friends, and perhaps even to those of you who are standing over in the common serving sausages, thanks for that, and walking by. Um, and a very warm and special welcome to Bobby Sager and his wife Elaine and to their family, members of the Sager family. Without their neighborliness and generosity, we would not be standing here for this occasion today, and we are grateful. This short ceremony will be followed by a lunch in our Welcome Center, and we'd like to invite all of you to join us for lunch after we are finished. So thanks again for joining us. And I'd now like to bring David Ricks, a former moderator of Park Street Church, to share with us a bit about the history of the bells. David. Thank you, Mark. We're here today to recognize the extraordinary gift from the Sega Family Foundation for the restoration of one large, nearly one ton bell and the gift of an additional five smaller bells that now reside in the steeple of Park Street Church. In 1819, Park Street Church mounted its steeple, the 2,000 bell, 2,000 pound bell. The bell was molded and cast in London by the Whitechapel Bell Foundry. For those of you who have an, who have an interest in history, this company was founded in 1570 over 200 years before the War of Independence. The foundry was owned by different families for 447 years, finally closing its doors in June of 2017. It specialized in the manufacture of large bells for churches throughout Britain and Europe. It was also the manufacturer of Philadelphia's Liberty Bell in 1752, and also Big Ben in 1759, the huge bell which rings from the North Tower clock at Westminster Palace in London. The Thomas Mears family, who owned the foundry in 1819, molded and cast the bell. We affectionately call it the Mills Mears Bell. From 1819 until January of 2019, this bell in the steeple of Park Street Church did not see the light of day. And for the 60 years prior to January 2019, it lay dormant, silent, in a state of disrepair. For those 60 years, the chimes that came from the steeple were played by an electronic carillon, which helped us to keep track of time in Boston and often hear the chimes of Christian hymns. The dormant state of the 2,000 pound 1819 Mears Mier Bell was discussed in 2017 when the church embarked upon a steeple restoration project. Some of our neighbors became interested in the various projects afforded by the steeple restoration and in particular, the long dormant 1819 Bell. With a gift from the Sega Family Foundation and as the light of day came upon the Mears Bell on January 19th, 2019, the bell was removed from the steeple in the early hours of that frigid morning. It was mounted on a flatbed trailer and shipped to the foundry of Meeks, Watson and Company in Georgetown, Ohio. Meeks Watson is known for its large bell casting and restoration of bells. As the Mears Bell made its way to Ohio, the promise of molding and casting five additional smaller bells accompanied the old bell on its journey to Ohio. August of 2021 marked a milestone in this journey. Restored and fully functional, the 1819 Mears Bell was mounted with the five smaller bells into the steeple. The sounds of these bells have been heard since August of 2021, but the completion of this journey is today, as they have now been finely tuned to perfection. We hope the result has been worth the wait. The ding-dong 
of girls, or in the case of larger girls, the bing bong, impacts us all in different ways. For me, the ringing of these bells is a call. It is like a magnet that draws and calls me to church. Our hope is that as the ringing of these bells echo throughout Boston, we will know we have been blessed by the gift of Bobby Sager and the Sager Family Foundation. Thank you so much for this gift to Park Street Church, Boston, Massachusetts, and the United States. Thank you, Bobby. You can say a few words. I, um, I'm just feeling super grateful. Um, uh, I feel grateful to be in a position to, uh, to help like this. I feel grateful that my wonderful family is standing down here in the, uh, in the front and that we, uh, we live as neighbors, uh, just about a hundred yards or less down the street on the left. So, uh, we, um, for many years I would sit out on the balcony of our apartment and listen to the bells chiming and, uh, and kind of get lost in how beautiful it was and close my eyes and have that sort of meditative moment. Uh, and then I found out from someone that the bells had actually broken many years before and that I had been for years and years listening to a tape recorder of the, of the bells. And uh, anyway, this started out this process, this discussion with the, uh, with the church to, uh, to help to restore them. So we have the great privilege uh, of being uh, neighbors really pretty much the closest uh, residential uh, neighbors to the church. And our interest in helping with the bells uh, really comes from our interest in, in making a difference in things around the world and other countries and so forth. And this was an opportunity to uh, help uh, literally right down the street. Uh, and so, uh, far from being thanked, we should be thanking everyone else uh, uh, and uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to be involved in this special project. And the last thing that I would say is uh, about the bells themselves. Uh, we, uh, we know how much the church does uh, beyond the four walls of the church, in the community and in the, in the broader world community. Uh, and to, to have a voice, an authentic voice, through these bells in this community, in our neighborhood, we just thought was just like, you know, a very appropriate and long overdue um, uh, change. And so I hope, that, uh, I hope that when you hear these bells, that there's that moment in our busy lives well, we just stop for a second. You just stop for a second and feel whatever you want to feel, but be in that moment. Let's let these bells help us all be in the moment in our daily lives. Uh, so thank you. Thank you to everybody. Uh, and um, I don't know who I'm supposed to. Okay. A reading from the book of Exodus. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood for work in every skilled craft. And he has inspired him to teach, both him and Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every sort of work done by an engraver, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Bezalel and Aholiab and every craftsman in whom the Lord has put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary 
shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. Here ends the reading. Well, good afternoon again. There is a, a deep Christian conviction that God's presence shines through the material world. Uh, as, a, as an avid outdoorsman myself, I cherish the beauty of mountain peaks and waterfalls and sunsets and forests and wildflowers. That's been a big part of my life and shared that with my wife and my children. Uh, when we encounter these things, uh, they point us to something beyond themselves. But this doesn't just happen in treks in the wilderness. It happens in the everyday as well. Just, the, uh, just yesterday morning, I was taking my youngest to the airport at an ungodly hour for one of those early flights. And uh, we were treated to the most beautiful s sunrise. And if any of you were up early yesterday morning, it was like the clouds were spread across the sky like butter spread across toast, just this light layer. And then there was one accent cloud in the sky as well. It was a beautiful pink and the sun was radiant the early morning sun. And we were reminded in the midst of our busyness and the flurry of getting out the door to get to the airport, once again, of the beauty of our world and its creator. What, if, what is true of God's creation in terms of the natural world is equally true of the craftsmanship that human beings can impose upon the world as those who bear the image of God. And according to this passage in the book of Exodus, Bezalel and Aholiab were two craftsmen that were imbued with the Spirit of God to create the tabernacle, to craft and construct the tabernacle, the place of God's dwelling. They were to do this out of precious materials. And their construction, not unlike a sunset or a mountain peak or a waterfall, would help to communicate the beauty, wonder, power, and presence of God to all who would encounter it. In a similar sense, uh, these bells do the same crafted out of actually material that was used in the tabernacle long ago, out of bronze. And they communicate the presence and grandeur and beauty of God. From a distinctly Christian perspective, uh, bells and steeples have been used to call God's people to worship and prayer. They are to peel forth as heralds of the good news that God is a God of life. They toll in a solemn way at times of mourning, in funerals, and they toll for great joy at times of the union of a man and woman in the covenant of marriage and a wedding. And as they ring, they are to declare the authority and presence of Almighty God, rebuking the devil and all the powers of darkness. And on that last point, to clarify, I would say that as Christians, we believe that there are powers at work in the world that are aiming to diminish human life, to enslave, to trap, uh, and to suck life out of us. And that the God whose beauty shines forth in the sunrise and in the bells that chime above us is, the, is a God whose purposes are to liberate us from those powers of darkness and bring us into the fullness of life. Not life like it's offered to us in the common ways that the world offers it in influence or wealth or fame or success, but life of the deepest kind. Life that enables us to deal with the challenges and sufferings that we encounter in everyday, the everyday world. Life that helps us to deal with the haunting senses of, gain, of, of guilt and shame which we know are there however much we try to suppress them. Life which enables us to be the best version of ourselves and to pour our lives out for the sake of others. As these bells ring out over the city, they announce the presence of the God of life. And what they do audibly, we at Park Street Church hope that our community does in an incarnate way, in an embodied way to the city as well. That is what we can bring and what we can offer in our long-standing over 200-year partnership with the city of Boston. And we don't offer this by any means perfectly. Uh, by all means, it's actually very imperfect. But we offer the God of life and his presence to the city, not through coercion or imposition, but we hope in humility and in service. There are two dimensions of the bells that uh, have already, in a sense, been mentioned by David or Bobby that I trust all of our neighbors in Boston can appreciate whether they share our faith or do not. One is order. The bells mark the passing of time. The Westminster quarters ring every 15 minutes and the striking of the hour, obviously on the hour. And as they do so, they enable our culture and life to be structured such that we can plan and schedule and meet together and live the life that we've been called to live for the common good in our city. Having started three years ago at Park Street Church, I've been around these bells now, well, these bells for two years, I should say, the imitations before, but that sound has become a, a natural part of my daily rhythm, a marking of time 
and one that I trust all of our neighbors can appreciate. The second is actually not, the first is order, the second is beauty. There is something deep and beautiful about the sound now, thanks to the generosity of the Sager Family Foundation, an authentic sound coming forth from the steeple that towers above. Our hearts long for beauty, and the tones of these bells remind us of a measured, stately, and rich and deep beauty for which all of us long. So these bells offer the gift of order and beauty for the sake of the common good. And in this sense, we trust that they are a gift to the city of Boston, a reflection of the heart of neighborliness to which we aspire as a Christian community in the city. Uh, we've seen an embodiment of this neighborliness in the generosity of Bobby Sager and his family. Not just here with these bells, but with the restoration of the fountain just across the street, among many other things. And Bobby, we honor and thank you. You're back there. We honor and thank you for your generosity and neighborliness in helping us to seek the common good in this way. And, and this leads to my final and clarifying comment. These bells in the steeple tower, in the steeple above, tower above us. Uh, they remind us of the grandeur and transcendence of the God to whom they point, a God who is over all and above all. And it's true from the Christian perspective that this God is in fact a God who is transcendent and glorious and mysterious and majestic. But I also want to make a statement that at the heart of the Christian claim, the good news that we have to offer to our city and that we, I hope, offer in humility and grace is the story of a God who came near in person the person of his son, Jesus, who moved into our neighborhood, who got proximate to need, who taught us the importance of neighborliness with unforgettable stories like the Good Samaritan, but more than that, who was himself the ultimate embodiment of neighborliness, of the good being the good neighbor, of giving up himself and pouring out in generosity that others might come to life, even those whom he would have described as his enemies. And I believe that not only his teaching, but his example in the person of Jesus is something that our city desperately needs to hear and at least to have authentic witnesses to in our daily lives. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. In other words, these bells remind us of the presence of the God who emptied himself for our sakes, who modeled for us the keys to living a life of love, of spending ourselves for the sake of others. And my hope is that these bells remind us of that one great neighbor, the one great model who offers us life in his name. All acts of neighborliness ultimately point to his great act of neighborliness for us. And it is for the recognition and honoring of him, this God that we know through the Lord Jesus Christ, that these bells ultimately sound. The one who is above all became below all, so that all might have life and become good neighbors to all. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you to join with me in a response using for a word of prayer. God, our Father, we thank you for the great gift of life. We thank you for the beauty and wonder of the world that you have made. And Lord, we thank you for that wonder expressed in every human face that has dignity and worth and value because of you breathing your life into us and creating us in your image. We thank you for the collection of human beings and communities and cities. And we thank you especially for this city, this great city of Boston, initially founded to be a city set on a hill to proclaim your glory to all who would hear of it. God, we thank you for the infrastructure and the networks and the relationships of this city, which depend chiefly upon the gifts of your grace to function and flourish. And we thank you, Lord, for the expression of neighborliness in the gift of these bells through the Sager Family Foundation, through Bobby and his family. We thank you for the joy that it is to be in bonds of relationship with other image bearers, even as we may not share all things in common, we share so much, and we thank you for the gift of what you've allowed us to share together. We pray, Lord, for your blessing upon Bobby and his family, this foundation and its work around the world to facilitate uh, conversations and change that would have an impact 
for the common good in places across the world, but also here in the city of Boston. We pray that you would bless this work and Bobby and his work. God, we thank you for our city. We pray for your blessing on our mayor, Michelle, and her work. Such a formidable task to lead this city. So many interests and competing needs, uh, uh, demands on her time. We pray that you would give her grace and strengthen her in her leadership of our city and that she would work tirelessly with a love of justice and truth for the common good, for the good of all. Lord, we pray for Park Street Church that you would give us grace to continue to bear witness to you in a way that is winsome and gracious, that is marked by love and care for our neighbors, for those in need, and goodwill toward all with whom we share this wonderful city. And we pray for your blessing, Lord, in the deepest way upon every person who calls Boston home. We pray that the people of this city would flourish because there would be a desire to be neighborly in a model, following the model that you've given us in your son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I'd like to invite our present moderator, Jason Abraham and Judy Manola to come and honor Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for coming out on uh, a crisp uh, morning in, in Boston. It is my pleasure to recognize Bobby Sager and his family who are here, Elaine, Shane, uh, Tess, and Patrick. Thanks for being here. Um, Robert Heinlein, the famed uh, author, once said, a generation History, a generation that ignores history has no past and no future. History is instrumental in shaping our future as a country and as a people. Park Street Church has been instrumental in part of this rich history since its founding in 1809. For example, the church was called Rimstone Corner because the basement was used for the storage of gunpowder during the War of 1812. In 1816, Park Street Church joined with Old South Church to form the City Mission Society to, which served the poor in Boston. The church was the site of many firsts, including the nation's first Sunday school in 1818 and the site of William Lloyd Garrison's first public statement against slavery in 1829. The Prison Discipline Society, the American Temperance Society, the Animal Rescue League, which is America's first animal humane society, and the Boston chapter of the NAACP was started right here at Park Street Church. One of your quotes, uh, Bobby, from your foundation's website that struck me is, and I quote, you don't have to go to the other side of the world to make a difference. You can find ways right around the corner from where you live, because when you contribute your time, your energy and your talents, you are making yourself the currency. And that is what you and your family have done right here in Boston and around the world. Jesus said, everyone to whom much is given, much is expected. You and your family have answered that call to give back and make a difference in the lives of tens and thousands of men, women, and children around the world. You have also given of yourselves selflessly to this community and you have invested in preserving Boston's rich history so that future generations of Americans and kids from around the world can learn, admire, and carry forward the lessons that it brings us. Bobby, you're a treasure of Boston because you have helped to preserve our past for the sake of our future. When one looks at your family and what you have done, the lives you have touched, the difference you are making in the world, it is beautiful, it is powerful, and it is spiritual because you are caring for God's people. You have rejuvenated our spirits by re reviving these bells. Is, as you said, it was your desire that the sounds coming out of the steeple uh, would, be, uh, that would be authentic, just like the messages that were coming out of our pulpit for centuries and continue to this day. We're not just a stop on the Freedom Trail. We are a church that has been and is currently a vibrant and contributing member of the city of Boston. Your generous contributions will not only maintain and preserve 
our past, but ensure that we continue to be a positive influence in the city of Boston, the country and the world. We are immensely grateful for you and your family for their generosity and kindness to Park Street Church. With your gift of these new bells, we are now able to chime not just the Westminster chimes every hour from 6 to 10 p.m., but also do other celebratory peals on major church events like Easter and Christmas, and also for city and national uh, celebrations such as the 4th of July. In this day and age of all things electronic, the sound of these bells is a welcome return to the real and authentic. They will now continue to toll and remind Bostonians of their rich history and call them to build a better and brighter future. It is my pleasure to honor you and your family with this plaque in grateful recognition of your contribution. May God bless you and your family and continue to use you to his greater glory. I just want to uh, add my word of thanks. I was a, a neighbor of Bobby's down the street. That's how we got to know the Sager family. And so uh, uh, I'm also, uh, as part of the Park Street family, eternally grateful for the generosity of this family. Uh, both the church and the Sager Foundation share the desire to be uh, good neighbors locally and around the world. And so we, we uh, share our work on that on that effort. So thank you very much. The, the plaque honors uh, the Sager Family Foundation's contribution to the bells, but also to the restoration of the clock and the steeple. Uh, so the bells were uh, given in honor of the children, uh, Tess and Patrick and Shane, and the uh, uh, clock restoration was done in, in memory of your grandfather? Grandfather Arnold Sager. Um, and so we are truly thankful, and I'm the last person you need to hear before we're going to hear the bells. So that's it for me. Thank you. I'm just going to say one thing. Oh, yeah. Listen to those bells. And when you listen to the bells, be in the moment and be grateful. to start talking. Uh, join us in this canticle Thank together. you for joining us for this occasion today. Thank you again, Bobby, for being here and for all your generosity. Thank you to all of you for being here. Please do join us inside or maybe linger out here as the bells begin to peal. Thank you. See you inside. <laughs>